Welcome to Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas, as we're all set for SCAC baseball between the Trinity University Tigers and the St. Thomas Celts. Joseph Shivana on the mound for the Tigers as we're underway. Grounded to short, and it gets by Baker. Can't secure it with the glove, and the first St. Thomas batter reaches. Yeah, and Baker working around that one just a little bit. I think cognizant of the fact that we're just starting things off here in San Antonio, and that means a little bit of speed at the top of the lineup and trying to work through that baseball, and you're right. Kind of just pinned it against the ground, certainly got some leather on it, but didn't get it secured in that glove. So that was Alex Trin getting on first base, and he'll head to second. That pitch gets away from Lazara, and with nobody out, St. Thomas with the runner in scoring position. Had a really rough start here. Just about a minute into the broadcast in San Antonio. Shivana in a familiar territory, though. A guy on the mound starting this one for Trinity who has dealt with a lot of traffic on the base paths this season. Pitch is fouled off. Makes it one and one. You talk about all the traffic Shivana has dealt with. In his last outing, went seven innings, got the win against Schreiner, against Schreiner but left getting out of a bases loaded jam, something he's done quite frequently throughout this season. Grounded to Holloway at first, Shivana covers and touches the bag for out number one. Runner advances to third. Yeah, and it looked like it was just a good job from Christian Holloway really to stay on his feet right there. Had to move pretty quickly towards second base in order to field that baseball. And I think he wanted to come up and flip it underhand in the process, very nearly lost his balance. Good for Trinity to at least get one out on the board, but that runner moves over to third, extra 90 feet, provides a little bit of threat early on. Lazara able to get on top of that one, keeping the runner at third base. As that was Bearden, who grounded out to first. He's now at C up, hitting third today. Grounded to third. Tinker checks the runner and throws across the diamond for out number two. And I mean, this one could probably not have started any worse for this Trinity team. A ball that gets left on the turf in the infield allows that leadoff runner to reach base. That next pitch gets away from Lazara behind home plate. The runner takes an extra 90 feet because of it. But now, all of a sudden, Shivana and the Trinity Tigers are just one out away from getting out of this first inning unscathed. As Timothy Mansell steps up to the plate, and takes ball one. Mansell, a senior from Houston, Texas, making his 21st start of the season, hitting 294 on the year. Just outside, ball two. The lead runner, Alex Trin, waits on third base. Got to first by way of an error and has advanced all the way to third. Strike in, and it's two and one. Yeah, Shivana not getting his spot on the outside part of the plate. A couple of pitches ago, looks like he took something off that last one. Maybe a little bit of a breaking ball. Mansell thought about for just a second, but just recognized a little too late. Swing and a miss. That evens the count at two and two. That time looked like he saw the spin a little bit better out of Shivana's hand. Wanted to get that same pitch and try and drive a run in early, but was well out ahead of it. Just a little too excited in the box. Now 2-2 two, two count, two down in the inning. Runner on third, pitches away, and it brings the count full. Yeah, good job from Shivana to just get back into this count. And drew it even at two and two. A little bit of a waste pitch right there. Nice job laying off of it. Now a battle as it moves full. Outside edge doesn't get the call, and it puts runners at the corners. Yeah, and in the same spot he tried to hit earlier in that at bat pitch that moved it to 2 and 0 oh. went back to it in the early going don't mind that one just testing that spot again seeing if that home plate umpire is going to remain consistent with it last thing that you want to do is give up a hit with two strikes and two outs in the inning to drive that first run home i'm sure he'll live with that free walk as Dylan McKee takes strike 1 McKee leads the Kelts and homers by far with seven on the year. That mark is good for 12th in the country. Swing and a miss, one and one. 
And Shivana not at all deterred by the early base runner. And he hasn't been in his last couple of starts. We talked about the traffic, the early going. Gave up eight hits against Shriner last weekend. Another five walks that were handed out. He's dealt with a lot of traffic. The walks were an issue earlier in the year in San Antonio. It felt like there was improvement there. Obviously a little concern with that inflated number last week and one in the early going in San Antonio, but largely it hasn't hurt him. Strike called, makes it two and two. So some base runners have reached on Shivana already, but he's done a good job getting to these two strike counts. We'll see if he can finish the job against McKee. Outside, three and two. Yeah, it feels like the third time they've really tested that spot. And I can say with a degree of certainty now that he's probably not going to get it, forces this count full again and threatens a bases loaded situation. And it won't happen. Swing and a miss. That's strike number three as Joseph Shivana gets out of the inning. Still nothing, nothing. The Tigers up to bat when we come back. Welcome back to San Antonio, Texas. Still nothing, nothing between St. Thomas and Trinity. As Jack Peterson set to lead things off for the Tigers, and he'll face Landon Murray. Making his eighth start of the year, comes in with a record of three and four, an ERA of a very impressive 1.55. Is definitely one of the best pitchers in the conference as he fires ball one. Yeah, and he's coming in off a couple of very impressive outings against a couple of the teams that coming into this conference slate we assumed would finish in those top four slots. And Texas Lutheran a couple weekends ago in Southwestern his last time out. Grounded fair. And the play made by McKee for out number one. Exactly the type of start that you want to see if you're Murray on the mound against this Trinity offense. In Southwestern last weekend, he went five innings, gave up six hits, walked three batters, four runs came across on his watch. Only one of them was earned, though, and that Texas Lutheran game a couple of weekends ago was even more impressive. Complete game where he shut out the Bulldogs. Seven strikeouts, two walks. Very, very impressive stuff. 2 nothing win for St. Thomas, and it broke up a seven-game losing streak they had coming into that one. Well, that's strike one to Caleb Woodward the first year playing in right today. But Luke, they had a seven-game losing streak going into that TLU series. Able to sweep the Bulldogs and get out of their funk as they'll try and do a similar thing coming off of a series where they were swept against Southwestern. They try to right the ship here in San Antonio. Pitch outside, and it's 3-1. and one. And you imagine that on both sides tonight, the pitchers are going to do their jobs and hold up their end of the bargain. Fouled off by Woodward, and it brings it to a full count. 
mean, Murray did exactly that last weekend in that series against Southwestern. Of course, a couple runs coming across, only one of them being earned, however. I think you anticipate in this conference, in this region, a little bit more run support that he just hasn't gotten. That gets away as Woodward heads the first base with a walk, the first base runner for the Tigers. As it brings up the catcher, Nick Lazera. Lazera hitting 300 on the year, making his 20th start. He works with Woodward on first. We've seen Woodward, they love to send him. We'll see when they do here as Lazera takes strike one. And the lefty standing in the box, a lot of speed over there at first. Not surprised to see Lazera square and round a bunt, but imagine he's too dangerous of a bat to really take things away from him. Maybe the only advantage he has is the fact that out there at short, Rocha is really shaded up the middle kind of on an island at third base is Adam Benavidez. Perhaps if you feel comfortable in his ability to place a bunt right here, it's not the worst of ideas. Runner goes, swing and a miss, throw not in time. It gets into center field. Woodward's thinking about three, but dives back to second base safely with a stolen base. Yeah, and ultimately that one sneaks through the middle of the infield, but looked like it was a closer play than I would have anticipated. It's Mason C behind the dish for the Celts today in San Antonio, and he kind of double clutched on that baseball. It was a little late leaving his hand, but a very competitive throw nonetheless. So Lazara now works with the runner at second. Grounded the second. Throw to first in time, but Woodward takes third base, and there's two down in the inning. Kind of similar starts for each of these squads. Both of these pitchers dealing with some traffic on the base paths. Each team getting a runner within 90 feet of notching that opening run here in San Antonio tonight. As Christian Holloway comes up in an RBI opportunity with two down in the inning. Take strike one. Just outside. Yeah, it looked like Murray did a nice job of getting ahead with that first pitch strike in on the hands of Christian Holloway already. Home plate umpire establishing that outside part of the plate that he tried to go to with his second offering, really not going to be called a strike here. That pitch misses to make it two and one. I don't know if you can hear in our microphones, but the wind is gusting right now. Flags in center field swirling in every which direction. So we'll see how that impacts this at bat. It's fouled off to make it two and two. Yeah, those flags blowing from right to left at the moment. Feels like this wind is kind of directly at our backs, which means it's directly blowing out on that third base foul line. Grounded to third. Throw in time, ends the inning. So each team has a frame, each team can't score. Nothing, nothing as we head to the second.
Welcome back to the Alamo City. Still nothing, nothing between these two SCAC opponents as Dylan Lamb, the senior from California, set to lead things off. Lamb takes ball one. Only the second start of the season for Dylan Lamb as he's making his third appearance. Strike called. Now one and two. Yeah, it didn't seem like Lamb was even considering that pitch right out of Shivana's hands. Maybe a backdoor breaking ball that he gets the benefit of on the outside part of the plate now to a left-handed hitter. Hit in the air to left. Preston under it. And there's one away. Man, Shivana doing a nice job here starting the visiting half of the second getting ahead of lamb ultimately in a one two count staying competitive right around the zone forcing his hands not all that much that he could do with a pitch on the outside part of the plate skies it the opposite way for out number one pitch low for ball one from shivana who's gone pretty deep into his outings the last several times went seven just a week ago against schreiner swing and a miss brings the count to one and one as Benavidez in the batter's box. A first year from Katy, Texas, making his fifth start of the season. Strike two. Outside. And now two and two. Yeah, not a big miss right there, especially after Benavidez swung through a couple of pitches, wasn't particularly close to him. It looked like Shivana was trying to hit the zone with a breaking ball, just trying to freeze the guy with the bat in his hands, just couldn't quite drop it in there. That one skips in the dirt and brings the count full. Did he go? Yes. And Lazara tags him out to finish the job. Strikeout for Joseph Shivana, his second of the game. Yeah, and he really seemed to have Benavides' number in that at bat. None of the three pitches that Benavides offered at were particularly close, or at least his bat didn't seem particularly close to him at the end of the day. Facing one of the premier arms in this conference in Joseph Shivana. Now Armando Rocha, the first year from Houston. It's that hard into right, but it's foul into the St. Thomas bullpen. Rocha hitting 233 on the air and on base percentage of 342. Two RBIs in his last game against Southwestern. Ball in the dirt makes it one and two. And a little bit of a waste pitch from Shivana right there. But you don't mind to head up in this count 0-2, but considering the number of pitches he threw in the top of the first, I'd like to see him get out of this inning in this at bat with not a ton more offerings. Close pitch, no call, and it evens the count. Did he go? Yes, and that ends the inning. Shivana strikes out the last two batters he sees as we head to the middle of the second on Tiger Network.
Bottom of the second in San Antonio. Alex Monson, the designated hitter, set to lead things off. Tigers went scoreless in the top of the first. Though Caleb Woodward did reach on a walk. Monson trying to give the Tigers their first hit of the game. Takes a pitch outside and it's 2-0. And, and he's really not a bad name to call upon if you're looking for exactly that. Not a guy with the most at-bats in this Trinity offense. A lefty who comes in and out of the lineups depending on the matchups. Takes a healthy hack right there ahead in a 2-0 count. It's because he can do a lot of damage against these right-handed hitters. It's where Scannell likes to use him the absolute most. Ball in the dirt and it's 3-1. Monson trying to reach as the leadoff man. And not yet. Strike called that makes it three and two. Hit hard, but drifting foul into the bullpen of St. Thomas. And Monson's just a guy, feels like he's found a lot of barrels here this season. Swing and a miss, strike three. Throw to first in time. And Monson is retired for the first out of the inning. And he found a barrel in that at bat, unfortunately, just sent it down that right field line into the visiting bullpen. It was a nice piece, but significantly out in front of it. Murray takes advantage of that fact. Nice breaking ball to finish Monson off. Had him out front again on the pitch down in the ground. It's now the six hitter, Colt Harris, up. Takes ball one. Harris hitting a good amount. 547 slugging. As that's chopped to first, or the third, I should say, throw to first in time for out number two. And a couple times these right handed hitters have come up for Trinity and just been out in front. Rolling over on the baseball out to third base. Benavidez over there again. Fields cleanly. Makes a nice strong throw across the diamond. Exactly what you want to see from this visiting team. Turf field here in San Antonio has tripped up some players in the field. But early on, defense looks good behind Murray on the mound. It's now Ty Preston comes up with nobody on and two down. Preston hits it through the gap. And that's the first hit of the game for either team. Yeah, and very quickly, the H flashes on the scoreboard. Rocha got a little bit of leather on this one out at short, but he was backpedaling, fading away the entire time because that baseball got on him very, very quickly. Incredibly difficult play to make out there at short. And the way he was trying to retreat towards that green turf in the outfield, it would have been incredibly difficult to throw Preston out at first, even if he had come up with that cleanly. As the third baseman, Kai Tinker, takes strike one. Rocha continues to drift back. He's standing all the way into the outfield grass right now. Maybe trying to be more prepared if another hot shot comes back at him as they'll check on Preston, who dives back safely. It's a Trinity team that's willing to try and snag bags at really any point in time. Two outs on the board, Ty Preston on base. Outfielder with a lot of speed. Hit sky high. Could be trouble, and it falls. Preston digging in for two, and he's in safely. Two runners in scoring position with two down. Yeah, and just a tough play out there in very shallow left center field, arguably straight away. It was Rocha at short who just kept drifting and drifting and drifting back into the outfield. And perhaps Dylan Lamb charging in from center might have had a beat on it, had the short stop just let up. Instead, it looked like he kind of just let that one play out and ultimately it fell in there. Smart base running from Kai Tinker who ends up on second. Now Jack Baker takes that high and inside. 
Baker, the nine-hole hitter today, hitting 264 on the year, an on-base percentage of 375. Take strike one. It's an interesting spot that feels like the spot Shavana was trying to attack earlier in the game, wasn't getting any calls. Team's open for business once again as their strike two. And just good sequencing right there. Hits that spot on the outside part of the plate and then comes back a little further in on the hands of Baker. Hit to center. That'll score one. Tinker coming around and safe easily. 2-0 Trinity. A two RBI single for the shortstop Jack Baker. Yeah, and with two outs on the board, this pitch catches a lot of the plate. Two strikes, two outs, even against the nine hole, not a spot that you want to hit if you're the guy on the mound for St. Thomas against an offense as dangerous as this one. And that's maybe the position Jack Baker is hitting tonight, but here on Tiger Network, we've talked about it all year. He's been up and down this lineup and certainly a capable bat wherever he hits. Now the leadoff man, Jack Peterson, who takes a ball. Throw not in time and a stolen base for Jack Baker. You wonder if Rocha maybe bobbled that at the end. That's what it looked like from here. Yeah, and in the process, it looked like Baker was also trying to throw a swim move out there at second base. You can see him look in. A very, very strong throw, but perhaps taking his eyes just off the ball before it was fully in his glove was Rocha out there at short. So now another chance to add on for Trinity. Swing and a miss from Peterson, and it's 0-2. The center fielder, 0 of 1 today, grounded out to first. But hitting 310 on the season. Now in an 0-2 hole. Hit in the air to right. Back at the wall. It's gone. A two-run homer with two outs for Jack Peterson, and it's a quick 4-0 lead for the Tigers. I mean, quick is the exact right word to use, Cole. This ball off the bat looks like it's hanging up there in the air, but it's a short right field here in San Antonio. We just don't see the ball get out very frequently on hits like those. Skies this one in a very, very nice day. The wind's blowing out a little bit to center field, but he put this one right down the line, shortest part of the park. Very quickly, it's 4-0. You're right, that ball looked like it hung up there, just waiting for it to come down. It did eventually come down, just over the wall. The other interesting part of that, it was hit to right, and those flags in center pretty clearly blowing to left. So opposite the way the wind was going and still able to put the Tigers up four to nothing as Caleb Woodward comes up. He reached his first time up with a walk. Up until that point for Landry Murray had been death by singles. And there's another single. Caleb Woodward hits it into left field and five consecutive Tigers have reached base. Yeah, it just feels like this Trinity offense had the ball bounce their way a couple too many times in the home half of the second. And it really all started with Kai Tinker just finding a way to make one drop out there in the very shallow outfield. Ball that had the opportunity to get the Celts back in the dugout instead. This two out rally has extended. Now Trinity has four runs on the board and feels like they're going to continue to threaten here. As a three hole hitter, Nick Lazara up. He takes strike one. You think about where this four spot started. Ty Preston with two outs, just hitting it barely past the glove of Rocha at short. Credited with a base hit on that play. As that's fair, down the first base line, Woodward digging in for three. Lazara going for two. Woodward's not stopping, but eventually tracks back to third base. A two out double for Nick Lazara. Seems to be what happens more often than not. You find a way to just sneak a couple in there, whether they're dropping 
on pop-ups or softly hit balls that just find their way through a gap. It's happened a couple of times. You know, after you've seen a couple of those as an offense, you gain a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of confidence, and then you come up and you barrel some baseballs, and that's exactly what Jack Peterson and now Nick Lazera have done here. It's Christian Holloway takes ball one. He'll try to keep the line moving. He's 0 for 1, grounded out to third. Six consecutive Tigers have reached. Single, a single, another single, and then a home run. And now a single and a double for the two guys on. Hit hard to center. And the play made by Lamb to end the inning. But the Tigers able to put up four runs, capped off by a Jack Peterson two-run homer. Trinity with the lead as we head to the third. Welcome back to San Antonio, Texas. Tigers now working with a 4-0 lead over St. Thomas as Joseph Shivana is back on the mound as he pitches to Israel Fields, who fouls that off for strike one. Now with a pretty comfortable lead, 4-0 in this game. Imagine Shivana's going to do everything he can to pitch ahead. Attacking the zone very clearly here against Fields, now ahead 0-2. Fields, a senior from New Orleans. He started every game for St. Thomas. As he takes ball one, close pitch from Shivana. Fields currently in a one for 21 slump. Trying to climb out of that in this weekend's series. And fouled off into the Tiger dugout. Keeps it at one and two. And those are typically the types of swings that have the power to break you out of slumps. Puts that one down the left field line here at Trinity University, and it barely sneaks over the wall. Pretty close margins out there in left field, not too far off that foul line. Fouled off, and this at bat will continue. Despite that one for 21 stretch, Field still hitting 250 on the year, so that should show you how well he started the season. Just hasn't gone so well lately, trying to break out of it. Fouled off again, and even if it goes to one for 22, still a very good at bat from the nine hole hitter. And yeah, more often than not, I feel like it's emblematic of things really not falling your way especially when you can put together an at-bat like this one where you're fighting pitches off consistently. And fell behind 0-2, watched a pitch from Shivana, and now three, four consecutive foul balls. Certainly very competitive. Makes you feel as if he's seen the baseball well. Another close pitch, 2-2. Two and two. So a good take by Fields. And clearly seen it well on that one. Shivana getting the call on the outside in the last half inning on a backdoor breaking ball. Just doesn't get it this time around. Fouled off again, and this at-bat will continue. 
We don't have the numbers in front of us for how long this at bat has been. What's your best guess, Luke? I mean, now 2-2 two -two count feels like at least four, not five foul balls. It's close to 10 at the moment. And that ends the at bat, strike three as Fields goes down looking and he'll head back to the dugout as out number one. Yeah, and a tough way to go down on that one. Just a check swing right there and didn't get the benefit of the umpire looking down that first baseline to confer with his teammate out in the field. Shivana ultimately prevailing right there. Good job of attacking, but a perhaps better job St. Thomas here just fighting pitches off and making them work really hard, still in the very early going. So it brings up the leadoff man, Alex Trin. Trin playing second base today. He's 0 for 1, but reached on an error. As that's fouled back to make it 1 and 1. Trinity committing the only error of the day so far was Jack Baker not able to secure the ball hit to him on the first pitch of the game. Pitches outside, making it two and one, but we were reading Landon Murray's stats, and you talked about all those unearned runs, or all those earned runs, I should say. That's been a problem for St. Thomas, but so far winning in the error category. As Tinker ranges over a good throw, and there's two down. And a very, very good play from Kai Tinker right here. Shows us some quick burst over there at third base. I think he has to be the person to get to this baseball. I think it's by him. Jack Baker probably would have been able to field it cleanly, but moving that far over into the hole, trying to throw back against his body, I'm not sure he would have gotten there. So quickly two down. Now Shivana fires strike one to Bearden. Bearden 0 for 1, grounded out to first with Shivana covering to finish the job. And outside, or inside I should say, making it 1 and 1. Bearden, another Celt that started every single game. Takes ball 2. Hitting 267 coming into this one, an on-base percentage of 385. Shivana locates that, and it's two and two. And a nice job just making an adjustment right there. Previous pitch, another breaking ball that he missed just up with. That time, found a way to drop it in the zone. Grounded foul, and we'll do it again. Not a lot of base runners for St. Thomas, but they've made Shivana work in this inning. Able to foul off pitches and extend at bats. Bearden doing that here as well. Grounded to Harris and the throw in time to end the inning. So the Celts go one, two, three, still in a four nothing hole as we head to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the third, the DH, Alex Monson up to bat. He struck out the first time he was up. 
Now leads off this inning and takes strike one. Monson hitting fifth today. As he takes that for ball one. Hitting 355 on the year. So he's been very productive when he's found his way into the lineup for Trinity. Grounded to first, and McKee walks over to the bag for out number one. Yeah, and a couple of sharply hit ground balls over to first base. McKee doing a nice job right at the bag, fielding them, at least keeping his body in front of them, knocking them down and recording some outs, exactly what Murray needs in this half inning. Clean spot after giving up a very crooked number in the home half of the second would be huge. So he fires strike one to Colt Harris. Harris over one today, grounded out to third base. There's strike two. Landon Murray in an unfamiliar situation in a four nothing hole, all four of those runs earned. Grounded hard to second. And the throw in time for out number two. Yeah, a couple more hard hit balls to start the bottom half of the third. This one out to Alex Stren. Kind of jumps up, gets on him very quickly. Tough to play this turf here in San Antonio, especially on these hard hit balls. But again, doing a nice job of staying in front of it. Stayed just composed enough to get that ball on over to first. As McDonald gets hit in a very bad way. Not all hit by pitches are created equal, and that looked like one of the worst ones. Yeah, not a tremendous effort to get out of the way of that. I'm very eager to take one for the squad, get a base runner here in the home half of the third, but not typically a place you want to wear one. McDonald was a pinch hitter for Ty Preston, who started this game in left field. Preston's been dealing with some injury issues lately. You wonder if something reoccurred. He leaves this game with a single and a scored run. McDonald goes. Throw all the way across the diamond in time to end the inning. What a play by Rocha at short. Ends the third as we head to the fourth on Tiger Network. Top of the fourth inning here in San Antonio. Tigers still with a 4-0 lead. Joseph Shavana back on the mound. As he faces Mason C, the catcher, and takes ball one. C, 0 for 1 today, grounded out to third. Hit hard into right. 
And it lands foul into the St. Thomas bullpen. Maddox McDonald ranging over, trying to make a play, but there was none to be made. Yeah, and the process is sliding pretty hard into the fencing out there in right field. Talked about it on the other side. Close margins between the foul line and the fencing for these bullpens. Selling out all the way as that one very narrowly got into the bullpen. Gave it his best shot. Good to see him get up very quickly after the fact. Ball low, and it's 2-1. and one. McDonald takes Woodward's place in right field. Woodward shifts over to left to replace Ty Preston. Ball high, and it's 3-1. and one. So Shavana in danger of losing the leadoff man. Has only issued one walk so far today. Swing and a miss, and a full count. Yeah, an important battle right here on both sides. Don't want to issue a free pass, especially not to the leadoff hitter. Here is the Celts trying to find some footing and get back into this thing. Foul back near us and it will remain three and two. In the dirt, ball four, and Trevana issues a free pass, the leadoff man aboard for St. Thomas. And a good at bat from C right there. Imagine that Trevana just lost that one a little bit mentioned so frequently on Tiger Network. Anytime that catchers step up to the batter's box, very, very frequently they display great vision, discipline at the plate. Imagine that he wasn't going to go at that pitch in the dirt. So C aboard on first base. As a designated hitter, Mansell in the batter's box. He walked the first time he was up. Now his second at bat of the day. And he takes ball two inside. And perhaps that pitch just a little bit low. Not entirely sure where it misses. Looked like Lazaro was lined up a little bit on the outside of that pitch, certainly further in over the plate than where he was set. Top of the fourth, 4 nothing. Trinity leads St. Thomas, but they have a man aboard with nobody out. Swing and a miss makes it two and one. Shavana has been very, very good on the year. When it comes to inducing double play ground balls, another situation where the Trinity Tigers could certainly benefit from it right now. Still working with a 2-1 count. Swing and a miss. Strike two, throw to second. Gets in the center field, runner going to third. That throw not going to be in time. So all of a sudden, a sacrifice possibility very alive for the Celts. And a big thing here, it just wasn't a great pitch for Lazar to throw on on what was already a very, very good jump from C over at first base. Giovanna not checking, very comfortable with where things are at in a 4-0 lead and ultimately puts a little bit more pressure on Lazara. That ball sneaks through and C very quick to get up and move on over to third base. The Mansell takes ball three. Shivana in danger of putting runners at the corners and issuing his third walk of the game. There's strike three. Mansell convinced it was ball four, but not getting the call. And there's one down in the inning. And a huge one from Shivana right there. Needed it with that runner just 90 feet away. Good job getting back to compete in this inning. Now one out on the board. I've already seen the ball stay on the infield that Trinity did a nice job of checking the runner and holding him at third previously in this game. Need to do so again if they want to move ahead and retain this four-run lead. 
and a big strikeout. You do not want to put runners at the corners with nobody out for Dylan McKee, who can do damage. We've mentioned it already, seven home runs on the season. So he takes that pitch away to make it two and one. Did he go? No. And it's three and one. Outside and he loses him, ball four. Puts runners at the corners with one down. And the zone remains very, very tight here in San Antonio. Consistently, we've seen really both of these pitchers throw on the outside portion of the plate. A couple of varieties that displayed pretty similar tendencies, but not getting that call with all that much frequency. Swing and a miss, strike one to Lamb, the center fielder today. Lamb 0 for 1, he flew out to left. Grounded foul and it's 0 and 2. Lamb, a little bit of an advantage in this at bat, standing in there as a left handed hitter. Matchup well with the righty on the mound, but also from the perspective that if you put something on the ground in the infield, Swing and a miss, that's strike three. Shivana gets him for out number two as the Tigers one out away from getting out of the jam. And shuts me up quite quickly as well. Don't have to worry about anything on the ground. Would have been a good opportunity for him to beat out any double play ball in the infield. Instead, second out on the board. Pitch misses and it's one and oh to Benavidez. Benavidez, 0 for 1, a strikeout victim of Joseph Shivana the first time he was up. That's grounded foul down the third base line, makes it one apiece. St. Thomas comes into this game 8 and 15, 3 and 3 in conference play, currently fifth in the SCAC. Tigers, 4 and 2, currently second. So it looked like he got jammed on that one, fouls it off to make it one and two. We mentioned that the Celts three and three record coming from two sweeps, one by them and one done to them. Trying to bounce back. I'm getting swept against Southwestern here in Trinity as Shivana misses that to make it two and two. Celts last season had a winning record 20 and 18. Grounded to second, and they'll go the short way to end the inning. So Shivana puts runners at the corners, but gets out of it here in San Antonio as we head to the bottom of the fourth as you're watching Tiger Network.
Jack Baker all set to lead things off for the Tigers. One for one with a single so far today as he takes ball one from Landon Murray, who's allowed four earned runs across. That's the difference in this game, a 4 nothing Trinity lead. But so uncharacteristic from Landon Murray. We talked about the ERA at the top of the broadcast. 1.55, one of the best in the conference, and definitely one of the best pitchers in the conference. Just one rough inning, and he's in a hole trying to rebound from it as this game goes along. Yeah, and it feels like right now in this bat against Jack Baker, he's certainly cognizant of the end result the first time out. Baker singling up the middle to get Trinity on the board. Murray not messing around with the nine-hole hitter in that offering. Baker fouls that off. And it brings the count full. So Murray able to battle back from going down 3-0. Your point stands, Cole. As he's going to issue the free pass to Baker here. I think it's not only do you not see him give up this many earned runs. I just don't think you see that many innings that look like the bottom of the second for this Trinity offense. Four runs, but you think back to it. Very nearly did the Celts get out of things cleanly. A pop-up that just hung in the air forever and fell between two guys that both had a pretty good shot at fielding it, and maybe one kind of prohibited the other from ultimately getting there. It's Peterson squared up to bunt, but takes it for ball one, now working with his longtime teammate Jack Baker on first base. Murray settled in the last inning, a scoreless frame. As we'll check on Baker at first. I mean, one of the big things is just how much pressure gets applied by these Trinity base runners. Anytime there's someone on base, there's a pretty healthy threat that they're going to try and move. Saw that quite frequently last weekend against Schreiner. But in game two, it did not work out. The Tigers were thrown out three times in the same game. Jack Peterson being one of them. We talked about that long steal streak that came to an end at ETVU. Was caught stealing again, only the third time in his career it's happened. Bunt down the first base line. They'll try and tag, and it's applied for out number one. Baker does move to second, though. Yeah, and pretty important recognition from McKee right there that that was the play Baker was going for. I think ultimately, if he goes to the bag and tries to step on it with his foot, Baker's probably sliding in there safely. Instead, recognizing that in Baker going to the ground, or excuse me, Peterson going to the ground, he's got a better chance to just go straight at his body, and that's exactly what he does to apply the tag. So the first year, Caleb Woodward up to bat. He has walked in and singled in his only two of plate appearances today. Working with a runner in scoring position in Baker, as that's fouled off to make it 0-2. Woodward hitting 225 on the year. A 375 on base percentage. It's sky high to left. Tough spot again, but this time St. Thomas able to make the play as Bearden secures out number two. Yeah, and that time Rocha again charging very hard from his spot at short. Clearly this time around gets called off by Bearden out there in left field. The play that probably should have been made earlier in this one. Easier job for the outfielder crashing in. Plays ahead of him the entire time. Rocha trying to move over, first get under it, and then has to continue to fade and track the ball as it drifts above him. It's the catcher, Nick Lazera, up. As he takes strike one. Lazera one for two. Grounded out to second and doubled the last time he was up. Nick Lazera's French Bulldog, Frank, is in attendance tonight. Got to see him before the game started. So that's grounded to second, and the throw made in time to end the inning. So the Frank Magic not working quite there as we hit the end of four in San Antonio. 
We head to the fifth on Tiger Network. Top of the fifth in San Antonio. And as the Tigers and the Celts. Skak play, first game of a three game set between these two squads. Trinity currently leading 4 0 in game one. As the shortstop Rocha up. Takes ball one. Rocha 0 for 1 today with a strikeout. Grounded to third. Tinker scoops it and makes the throw for out number one. A quick at bat, but that's not been the case for every single time Siobhan has faced somebody. And St. Thomas Kelts able to drag out at bats, fouling pitch after pitch off. And it's being reflected in Siobhan's pitch count. Yeah, through the first four complete innings here in San Antonio, Siobhan was just a pitch shy of the 80 mark on the outing. A lot of pitches, about 20 per inning. And that's not exactly how they got distributed. Felt like that second frame was a little quicker, but a lot of traffic in every other one so far today for Shivana. And good to see him get a quick first out here to start the top of the fifth, but again falling behind in this bat. Grounded sharply, but handled by Holloway, who takes it to first himself. So a good start to the inning for Shivana with his pitch count in not very good shape. And of course, as soon as I say, this at bat falls behind, induces a ground ball that stays in the infield. Feels like he's attacked the zone very, very effectively today, despite that elevated pitch count. Just the three walks that have been handed out. Guys reaching base in various ways. Of course, the error, couple of errors now in the field for this Trinity squad. Hit hard but foul, as that's Israel Fields. Still trying to get out of his slump, now one for 22 in his last 22 at bats. Takes that ball away to make it two and one. We know despite this elevated pitch count, Trevana Going to be comfortable out there on the mound for quite a while in this one. Swing and a miss. I apologize. It's actually Alex Trin, the leadoff man. Fields grounded out just a moment ago. But either way, Shabana in decent shape. Now in a two-strike count with two outs. Swing and a miss. That strike three. A quick inning for Joseph Shabana. As we head to the bottom of the fifth on Tiger Network, it's still 4-0 Trinity.
So some of the Tigers fielders heading back out to the field and Trin not going anywhere as it looks like they're gonna change the call. And this Tiger dugout not happy about it. Both Dave Smith and Tim Scannell coming out to state their grievances like it's Festivus. And it looks like they're gonna say Trin fouled that last pitch off. So not strike three, Shivana gonna have to do it again. And that pitch misses. Yeah, and missed what the umpire just flashed. Having a hard time recalling as you see a replay. Fouled off. I believe he said it's 3-2. I have to recapture what the count was. Everybody was in the mood to go to the bottom of the fifth. Saw the replay that just showed on your screens, though. It looked like Trin swung at that pitch and pretty much right off the bat was out of the box. So this one, more clear foul ball the last couple of offerings. Typically, when a call like this is made, you see a guy in the batter's box turn and make an appeal pretty early on. He was pretty very quickly on his way to first base. Hit to center and the catch made. So Jack Peterson able to get the out anyways as now we head to the bottom of the fifth in San Antonio. Bottom of the fifth as Christian Holloway leads things off for the Tigers. And take strike one from Landon Murray, who's still out there now in his fifth inning of work. Still in a 4 nothing hole. Hasn't gotten any run support. That's fouled off to make it 0-2, and that's been a problem for St. Thomas. They have struggled to put runs across the plate, particularly in that seven-game losing streak, several times when they failed to score more than three. So far, things trending in that direction again as Holloway fouls that off to keep this at 0-2. Of course, being on Tiger Network, there's a whole lot more familiarity with these Trinity Tigers. And offensively, I've spent a lot of time this season really waiting for these bats to get hot. And this is a lineup that has a number of Trinity Tigers hitting over 300 on the season. On the other side, for St. Thomas, it's very, very few batters that have an average up over that mark. One of them, Holloway, grounds that to short and is retired for out number one. Now you mentioned it's a scarcity in the St. Thomas roster for people batting over 300. A few who have hit that magic number but not very many overall. It's now Alex Monson up to the plate. Fouls that off himself and he's gonna walk that off. I mean, the big thing about it, it's a level in Division Three baseball 
in which you see guys hit 450 with some regularity. That's usually that mark that the top hitters in the country carry throughout the course of a season, if not even higher than that. And when things continue on into postseason play and regionals and super regionals, you'll see quite a few names hitting 400. That's hitting to right by Monson. And he's aboard with his first hit of the night with one down in the inning. And he's a guy that certainly will trend in that direction for this Trinity offense. Mentioned early on that he doesn't have as many at-bats as the regulars in this lineup, considering the fact that he moves in and out and trying to take advantage as a lefty against these right-handed pitchers. But he came into this one hitting better than 350, and that'll certainly help his result. Another very well-barreled baseball right there sent through the right side. We've seen him progressively get more and more playing time, particularly when a righty is on the mound like there is tonight. As Colt Harris in the batter's box now, he's 0 for 2, grounded out both times he was up. Now working in a situation with one out and a runner on first. And they'll check on Monson once again. Monson has yet to steal a base this season. As Harris takes that high and inside, he's 0 for 1 as he was caught stealing on his only attempt. So it seems unlikely to go, especially with one out already on the board, but can never count it out. Strike called makes it 2 and 1. You can never truly count it out. Coach Scandal telling me at the beginning of the year they run a green light offense. So if a player at first feels like they want to go, they have that choice. Pitch outside, and it's three and one. So Harris one pitch away from an easy trip to first base. I mean, the truth of it is if you can get a good enough jump, I think most guys have the capacity to run. Alex Monson is probably categorized in that group. I think there's very, very few players on this roster that I wouldn't trust with that type of decision making. Now full count pitch to Harris. Runner does go. Harris grounds that up the middle. Out at second. And unable to secure it at first was McKee. So it looks like Harris will be safe there. A really close play at second base. We'll have to see a replay. It looked like Monson might have been safe from up here, but he's called out. Yeah, and Monson on the move this time around certainly did make it a closer play at second. Feel like he got some support from his dugout trying to convince the field umpire right there. Looked on live time as if he was out, but based on this replay, it looks like that glove doesn't close until his foot is on the bag right here. Either way, it'll go down as a fielder's choice for Colt Harris. It's now Maddox McDonald who entered this game as a pitch hitter pretty early. Makes his second plate appearance. Harris back safely at first. McDonald was hit by a pitch, he reached in that painful way, his only time up. Ahead 1-0. and And they'll check on Harris again. And now with two outs, have to assume that the likelihood that Harris moves is a little bit greater. He does have one more attempt on the year than Monson did, but in this situation, certainly would like to have a runner in scoring position. And St. Thomas very aware of that. Swing and a miss, strike one. Getting into the bottom of the order for Trinity that's done so well today. 
the spot, one for one with a hit by pitch between Preston and McDonald. As McDonald takes strike two, and then you have Tinker, who's one for two, hitting eighth today, and then Baker, one for one with a walk, hitting ninth. One two pitch to McDonald. Swing and a miss, that's strike three. And that ends the inning, still four nothing. Trinity has the lead as Murray has done a good job keeping a cap on this offense and holding the deficit. Welcome back to San Antonio, Texas. The Tigers still lead St. Thomas 4-0 as Joseph Shivana is out there for his sixth inning of work. And he'll face the number two hitter, Bearden, who's 0 for 2 today. First pitch away for ball one. Is that pitch count still high for Shivana the way the last Inning ended for Shivana, didn't exactly help that, had to throw around five extra. That's hit sky high, playable in the infield. Tinker calling, and he makes the play on the mound for out number one. The last two innings, however, Shivana has had a couple more at bats of this quicker variety. Nice job doing the same to start the top of the sixth. Grounded to Shivana, and he makes the play to Holloway for out number two, a return to sender, and there's two away. We've seen it on both sides of this one. A couple of plays where the first baseman has had to just hang on their toes on the bag. Shivana fielding that one cleanly on the opposite side of the mound, however, made it a little bit of a tougher throw for him, maybe rushed it just a little bit. So he had a lot of time to think about it up until the throw. Nearly got away from him, but instead, two outs now very quickly. As the cleanup hitter, Mansell up, the designated hitter. 0 for 1, struck out looking the last time he was up. Take strike one. Two down in the top of the sixth. Fouled off, and it's one and two. Shivana well above 90 pitches. Swing and a miss, strike three. And that ends the top of the sixth. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth in San Antonio. Still no hits for St. Thomas.
Bottom of the six here in San Antonio is Landon Murray back out there to face the eighth hitter, Kai Tinker. Pitch low and away for ball one. Tinker one for two today. He's singled and also grounded out to short. Pitch very far away, but nobody on base, so no harm done. You know, it's pretty remarkable, Luke. 4 nothing for Trinity, but all the runs scored in one inning. So we have just a bunch of zeros on the scoreboard right now in 1-4. Yeah. The seven hits that Trinity does have, bulk of them also coming in that inning. A home run off the bat of Jack Peterson. A bloop just pop-up that fell in for Kai Tinker, who stands in at the moment. Grounded softly to short. It's going to be a tough play. Throw not in time as Tinker beats out the throw from Rocha. And Rocha does absolutely everything he can on this one. He's covered a lot of ground for the Celts here defensively. Makes a nice play of getting to this ball one, but then also at pretty much full speed. He feels it cleanly with the bare hand, makes a nice strong throw over to first, but Tinker just with a little too much time, he's able to beat that one out by about a step. It's now Jack Baker up, one for one with a single and a walk. We talked a little bit in the last inning about how well the bottom of the order is done. And they're back at it again with Tinker being two for three and on first base currently. Runner goes, swinging a miss from Baker, throw to second in plenty of time. No, the throw looked to be perfect, but Tinker able to dodge the tag and slide in safely. Yeah, this is a pretty incredible swim move from Kai Tinker right here. Just great neck recognition that that ball is in there. And you see, it doesn't look like that tag comes, at least not from that angle, and then just slides back in there to get a hand on the bag. So a great swim move by Kai Tinker. Puts him at second base. And a runner in scoring position for Trinity as Baker drops down the bunt. Throw to first in time, and the sacrifice is complete. One down in the inning. And Trinity playing for just a little bit more insurance here in San Antonio. Baker has proven already that he is more than capable of swinging away. Single back up the middle in the early going to drive a run home, but ultimately just gets a job done. And moves another runner within 90 feet of scoring. As the leadoff man, Jack Peterson, comes up to the plate. He's already homered once in this game. Grounds that foul. Peterson's one for two today. Grounded out to first, homered, and was thrown out on a sacrifice bunt. Smacked into foul territory as some cars might be in trouble in front of the Bell Center. Yeah, he smashed that baseball just well out ahead of it and drives it well foul. Murray's certainly going to have to pay attention and be careful in this at bat, however. Fouled off as Peterson stays alive. Tigers maybe with a little extra incentive to try and put 10 runs on the board and get this thing over with through seven. Hit sky high. And the play not made. We'll see what the call is here. As McKee ran into Peterson, who will be called out. Yeah, not entirely sure on the application of the ruling, but Peterson makes his way down the foul line. Neither party trying to avoid the other right there. So Peterson called out. He heads back to the dugout, and there's two away for Caleb Woodward. Still works with Kai Tinker on third base.
Woodward one for two today, a base hit. He also flew out to left and has also walked as he takes strike one. That's low and it makes it one and one. Tigers able to get out to a 4-0 lead in the bottom of the second, but haven't added anything to it. So we're in the bottom of the sixth now. So St. Thomas just still hanging around as Woodward takes strike two. Luke, I think a lot of credit goes to Landon Murray for how he's been able to settle down and keep his team in this game. fouled off as Woodward stays alive. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. We talked about it earlier in this inning. Came into this frame with seven hits on the board. Trinity did. Six of them came in the bottom of the second when they scored all four of those runs. Outside of that, Murray's been really, really clean and very impressive. Hit to second. Throw in time. A close play, McKee able to scoop it to end the inning, and it's still four to nothing as we head to the seventh. Joseph Shivana coming back out when we come back on Tiger Network. Top of the seventh inning here in San Antonio, a 4 nothing game between Trinity and St. Thomas. As that pitch misses from Joseph Shivana. McKee back in the batter's box, 0 for 1 today. He struck out and walked. Check swing, didn't go around, but he takes strike two. Fouled off, and it remains one and two. We talked about Joseph Shivana's pitch count now at that magic number of 100. Hit hard, but foul, as it's hit to a similar spot that Peterson hit at the last half inning. in the dirt, and it's two and two. We've seen Shivana throw upwards of 115 pitches, but you gotta wonder how many more he'll throw in this game despite the circumstances. Yeah, still the biggest zero in this one is the runs allowed as he is thriving at the moment. Hit to shallow center, Peterson charging in and makes the catch for out number one. But of course, another zero on the board that deserves to be alluded to. But that's all we'll do. Only allude. Just illusion here in San Antonio. Nothing more than that. No statements made. But again, the context of the pitch count also hanging over things at the moment. He's been aided pretty significantly by some quicker innings in the last couple of frames. But in the early going, St. Thomas did a lot to threaten. 
outside, and it's a quick 2-0 and to Lamb, who's 0 for 2 today, another strikeout victim of Joseph Shavana. Shavana has eight strikeouts on the day. That's grounded to first. Holloway can't field it at first, but flips it to Shavana for out number two. Yeah, and a couple of outs on the board that haven't helped the pitch count either, but this time Christian Holloway knocking it down, make sure that the out is recorded. Good job there from Shavana seeing it through. An easy opportunity for him to kind of just forget about it and take his time, allow Holloway to make that play that might not happen ultimately because Shavana gets over to the bag right there, even with that pitch count well into triple digits now. He does record the out. Swing and a miss from Benavidez, who hits that foul on the roof of Calgar Gym to make it 0-2. Shavana trying to get through his seventh inning of work. He's through six and two thirds. Way away, and it's one and two. Sun beginning to set in San Antonio, seeing the effects of daylight savings time. So that's fouled off. Normally it would be pretty far dark here in South Texas at this time in the ballgame, but. Sun just beginning to set. You see the last bits of it out in right field. Now a 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. That's strike three. Shavana adds to his total as we're through seven. Still 4-0 Trinity and that other important zero on the board. New pitcher on the mound for St. Thomas. Landon Murray's day is done. He leaves responsible for the four runs on the board as Gilberto Arozola enters the game for the Celts. He'll face Nick Lazera, who's up for the third time today. He's, or is up for the fourth time today, one for three with a double. First pitch in the dirt for ball one. Swing and a miss, strike one. And as 
Rosola comes into this one definitely deserves to be talked about a little bit more the performance from Landon Murray six innings eight hits given up and of course those four earned runs but outside the bottom of the second he was quite spectacular continues very strong performances in his conference slate of games lots to be excited about especially on the mound if you're the Celts hit in the air to right and the catch is made by Fields for out number one you know you hear about Landon Murray coming into this one you don't see him in person and just I was most impressed with his ability just to settle down after that four run inning a lot of pitchers would have been rattled rattled and unsettled after that able to settle right back in throws another four innings after that as Christian Holloway steps into the batter's box coach Peterson talking about Landon Murray said that he's most impressed with his ability to compete says that's what makes him so good honestly it's just that he wants to be good was what he said Yeah, but there's certainly some qualities right there that you need if you're going to pitch in this conference, in this region. Very infrequently are you going to go out and put zeros on the board for an entire game and have to find a way to be able to respond. And you're right, that's exactly what he did here in San Antonio tonight. Responded and has largely shut down this Trinity offense as they try and get it going again here in the bottom home half of the seventh. Add a little insurance. 2-1 pitch. Hit sharply and a close play. Matt McNaney, the catcher out injured, able to get to his feet to a standing ovation from this Tiger dugout. Yeah, I think he got to his feet, but not before he wore that one. I think that one took a shot off of his arms. One of them, he's got a cast on as it is. Yeah. That took a deflection pretty hard. I don't know if you want it on the already injured arm, a little protection there, or the other one. It's kind of a threat either way. That's what they say, even it out, right? Pitch in the dirt to make it three and two. But looks like he's okay. He hunched over a little bit after saluting the dugout, but seems to be fine. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of a breather. Slow the heart rate down. He's alert now, I can tell you that much. Hit to right. And the catch made by Fields once again for out number two. And Fields nearly overrunning that one. I feel like those corners and both sides of the outfield, the fact that there's not a whole lot of ground between the foul line and that fencing for these bullpens, it comes to play or comes into play in more ways than one. He was getting over there very quickly, I think maybe trying to put himself in a position to just brace himself in case that was up against that fencing. And in the process, because of his awareness of it, he very nearly overran it. But a nice adjustment, able to track it down ultimately and record the second out here another pinch hitter in the game in for Alex Monson it's Diego Gomez Gomez waves at that one you'd assume Gomez in there to match up with the lefty currently on the mound in an 0-2 hole fouls it off Two down, nobody on, and a 4 nothing game in the bottom of the seventh. In the dirt, one and two. Gomez settling back in. Still working with a two-strike count. outside yeah, nice job of fighting back to draw even in this one good eye again leaving that pitch off the plate on the opposite side 
Swing and a miss, that's strike three. As the St. Thomas Celts continue to hold this deficit, it's still 4-0 as we head to the top of the eighth. Joseph Shivana coming back onto the mound when we come back. Top of the eighth inning, Joseph Shivana back on the mound, 112 pitches into his outing. First pitch lands for strike one. It's a pitch hitter in for St. Thomas. It's A.J. Gonzalez, the sophomore from Kingwood, Texas. Swings at that and it's 0-2. And had him absolutely fooled on that one. A really impressive breaking ball that ends up at his back foot. Grounded up the middle. Could be trouble. Throw from Baker in time. And there's one down in the eighth. And Shivana tried to whip around and throw his glove out there to put some leather on this baseball as it snuck right past him. Falling off towards that first baseline. He couldn't get to it. Baker had to range all the way behind second base. A lot of ground to cover. A tough throw to make on the move. But he had it all covered right there. So Shivana, 7.1 innings into his outing. Fire strike one. And it's Israel Fields. Fields is 0 for 2 today. Grounded out the last time he was up. Takes that pitch away to make it 2 and 1. Barreled to center, but it falls in the lap of Jack Peterson, and there's two away. Yeah, this one. Hard hit, but maybe just a little too much off the end of the bat. I had some fade into that left center field gap, but hung up plenty of time for Peterson to find his way underneath it out there. Just one more out from getting out of things here in the eighth. Pitch high to the leadoff man, Alex Trin. Flew out to center the last time he was up. He's 0 for 3. Strike one. Shavana continues to throw pitches now in the 120 area. And a good take by Trin, and it's two and one. And a really good spot in on the hands of Trin right there. Fortunately for Shavana not getting the call in that spot that time. Fouled off, and it's two and two. Talking to Dave Smith about some of the high pitch counts that Shivana has had in the past, he said that there is no set limit, as that must have been fouled off. Trin stays in the batter's box. But he's thrown around this mark before. This is about 
when he's been pulled in the past. As that pitch outside makes it three and two. One of the biggest differences, there's no one warming in this Trinity bullpen at the moment, and Siobhan is continuing to attack the zone very nicely. Fouled off, and we'll do it again. In the dirt, ball four, and he loses Trin. So this inning will continue for Shivana with two down. Yeah, and his fourth walk of the affair tonight. As it looks like Nick Lazar is going to take a little bit of a trip out to the mound, have a conversation with Shivana as he takes a long look into the dugout. Coaching staff not coming to talk at the moment. Although there are some arms up and warming. He's now at 127 pitches, and I'm sure he's likely feeling it. I know we've alluded to the zeros on the board, but I think he knows his limits as well as anybody. And well, I'm sure there's a milestone or achievement that he would like to go and get. I think there's other goals that he wants this season as well that certainly outweigh this one game tonight. Two down in the top of the eighth inning. As Shivana will face Bearden once again, who's 0 for 3, popped out the last time he was up. Hit up the middle, and the first hit of the day for St. Thomas. So there goes the no-hitter bid. Shivana made it all the way through 7.2 innings of work. And now pitching coach Dave Smith will come out, and you would imagine this will be the end of Shivana's day. Yeah, Coach Smith was quick to spin around in the dugout. I think grabbing his walkie-talkie and trying to relay some info out to the bullpen. We'll see if he's going to take the ball quite yet. Imagine he won't, but I assume it's another one of his tactics to buy a little bit more time for those warming. That is the one wrinkle is that arms were not going in the pen for quite some time. Only recently have they started warming up. And you'd assume it would be Will Hellings coming in with a four-run game. It's a long meeting, and Shivana will stay out there. Yeah, and you assume that Coach Smith is going to walk to the dugout. Shivana will probably engage and then disengage, and then we might get a change. Or with two outs on the board, we might see him go ahead and attack and try and get this one final out. So Shivana staying in this game. Runners on first and second. First pitch is away for ball one. Of course, one of the other things we've seen quite frequently here in San Antonio is Shivana start in at bat this late in the game, maybe get into a 1-0, 2-0 count, and then the change is ultimately made. Ball in the dirt. Lazara does a good job to keep that in front of him and hold the runners. And that will be the day Dave Smith points the finger. And there will be a new arm in for the Trinity Tigers, but what a day it was for Joseph Shivana. He leaves this game only allowing one hit through 7.2 innings of work. We'll come back with a new pitcher on Tiger Network.
New arm in for the Tigers, it's Will Hellings who comes in with a 3.63 ERA and multiple saves on the season. So he'll face it, the catcher, Say, or C, I should say, who takes ball one. Count actually 3-0 and as Hellings enters this game mid at bat. And fire strike one. And Hellings certainly used to these situations, as we just alluded to. Doesn't make them any less challenging, though. 3-1 count. Low, that's ball four. And the tying run will come up to the plate for the Celts. And Hellings, a very, very hard-throwing righty. And it's paid dividends for the most part here in San Antonio in his first year in these maroon uniforms for the Tigers. The last time we saw him on the mound here at Trinity, the velocity maybe came back to bite him a little bit. Certainly, if you can barrel up a baseball, it can go a long way and dangerous situation for that to be the case right now. Pitch misses inside, and it's 1-0. There's Mansell in the batter's box for the Celts. 0 of 2 today. Low, and it's 2-0. St. Thomas getting out hit in this game, 8-1. to one. But an opportunity to tie the game in this inning. Still two down, though. Strike called. An important one right there. Not an offering over the heart of the plate, in on the hands, and unable to get them started and get that barrel all the way through the zone. Puts his count 2-1. Fouled off, and that evens it at two apiece. Yeah, a little bit more pressure on Mansell right there in a 2-1 count. Coming right back at him, forcing him to swing the bat. This is the part of the order you would one up in this situation if you're St. Thomas. Mansell up now, McKee on deck. That's in for strike three, and that ends the inning. Hellings locates on the outside edge as we head to the bottom of the eighth on Tiger Network. Welcome back to San Antonio, Texas. A new arm in for the University of St. Thomas. It's Sebastian Solis. Comes in with an 0-1 record and an ERA over 10. He'll try to get that number down here in the bottom of the eighth inning and hold the deficit for the Celts, only down four.
as Colt Harris will step into the batter's box for Trinity. Harris 0 for 3 today. And takes ball one inside. High and inside, and it's 2-0. and So we continue SCAC play here in San Antonio, Texas. Obviously an important day any time the Trinity Tigers are playing in terms of baseball, but important day in other ways for baseball today. Opening day for the MLB season as Harris gets hit hard by that pitch and flips the bat. He'll head to first. Yeah, I mean, a pretty great day for sports in general. Didn't have broadcast last weekend for the opening weekend of March Madness in the NCAA tournament, but it continues today. I've been watching the entire time we've been on air. Sorry for our supervisor down in the control room. <laughs> I don't know how Josh Machigimba feels about that one, but I'm sure the likely answer is that he's indifferent because I'm sure he has the games on as well. <laughs> Maybe some opening day baseball on top of that. I'm sure it's across the board down there. Well, there's a lot of screens. They use them in different ways. There's Maddox McDonald in the batter's box. He takes strike one. So many good games across March Madness and MLB today. Of course, I have to mention that the Padres won. Wasn't their opening day. They played two games in Seoul, but beat the Giants 6-4. to four. Yeah, and there's a spirit about winning on this day. Certainly makes things feel really good. Other important scores, the Cubs and the Rangers currently tied at one apiece. The Rangers unveiling their World Series championship pennant today. Houston Astros fell to the New York Yankees. Blowing a 4-0 lead. The Yankees scoring five unanswered runs to win that game. And another important score, the Pittsburgh Pirates beating the Miami Marlins 6-5. We were just talking to one of our SIDs, Peyton, about that. He's cheering on the Pirates, so they get the win. Tigers up 4-0 here in a... Important SCAC game. St. Thomas 3-3 three and three in the conference. Trinity 4-2. and two. Fouled off, and it's 1-2 and two to McDonald. Luke, I don't know if you saw him, but Brian Yanselson was here yesterday. Came to practice, so... For him, I have to shout out that the Orioles won 11-3. Big opening day win and the debut of Corbin Burns. Yeah, what was a pretty scary team last year somehow manages to get even better. Throw to first, not in time, and McDonald beats it out. So the first two Tigers are aboard in the inning. as it'll bring up Kai Tinker hitting eighth today. Working in a good situation, trying to add on to this lead. As we're gonna have a meeting at the mound. So Lee's allowing the first two Tigers to reach base. This is still within reach for St. Thomas, only a four-run game. Down to their final three outs, but in order to have their best chance, you're going to have to hold the Tigers scoreless in this inning, you would think. Yeah, and even then, three outs, trying to mount four runs against Will Hellings, who will return to the mound with a pretty empty slate. No runners on when St. Thomas will resume, of course. Makes that job that much more difficult in trying to bounce something from scratch against Hellings. Well, 
Runners on first and second for Kai Tinker. He's two for three today. Has that one over his head. And looks like Salih's struggling to locate right now. So he'll try and get back into the groove of things. Still no outs on the board and a 1-0 count to the third baseman. And it feels like one way or another, if you're St. Thomas, you would just like Salise to find some success right here, find a way to throw strikes, pitch to contact if that's what it takes, even if Tinker or Baker in the 8-9 hole can find a way to drive a run in. The other aspects that you're looking at is the fact that this is a three-game series, and of course, you want to save as many arms as possible as you enter the next two games of play. Locates that, and it's one and two. Mentioned the Tigers four and two in conference play, coming off a series victory in Kerrville, Texas against Schreiner. Grounded to third, off the glove, and everybody's safe. Yeah, and it looked like over there at third base, getting just a little bit ahead of himself was Benavidez. I think he assumed he'd have an opportunity for two as he was starting to head towards the bag. And the process moved just out of reach of that baseball, and it glanced just off the end of the leather. A tough break for the Celts, and things continue here in the bottom of the eighth. We talked about all the errors that St. Thomas has racked up this season. Add another one to the total, their first of this game. As Baker works with the bases loaded, takes strike one. Foul back near us, and it's 0-2. Baker up with nobody out, so this inning has the potential to be a big one for the Tigers. Uh, still up 4-0. Pitch very away, and it's 1-2. and two. Yeah. Spiked ball right there that's very nearly a wild pitch, and it probably is in all other circumstances except for when C is behind the dish because he does a tremendous job. What an effort getting over to block that right there and keep the runners where they're at. Fouled back again as Baker stays alive. Still... 4-0, St. Thomas down to their last three outs, but you would think any runs here would almost secure the Tigers' victory, making this frame very important. Fouled off again as Baker continues to work this at-bat. Base is still loaded. Harris at third, McDonald at second, and Tinker at first. Tigers have nine hits on the night. They're looking for 10. Grounded to third, takes a deflection, and everybody's safe once again. A run scores from third, and it's 5 nothing Trinity. They get their first run on the board since the second inning. And another one right there. It's just a very tough play for Benavidez at third. Playing in, trying to cut the runs, certainly going to impact the end result as this one gets on him a lot quicker than it otherwise would. So now Jack Peterson up to the plate. One for three, already has a home run in this game. Take strike one. 
I feel like I should note with the bases loaded, the Tigers have hit two grand slams already this year. One from Christian Holloway and the other from Pierce Matthews. Both of those grand slams occurred while the Tigers were down in the game in the final three innings. Fouled off and it's one and two. In the dirt, two and two. Salis trying to find a way out of this. Still no outs on the board. And the base is filled with cats. There's strike three, outside edge as Peterson goes looking for out number one. And so Lee's needed it desperately right there, and he got it. A good job of remaining competitive in that at bat. 2-2 two -two count, important right there. He had a pitch to waste, but didn't even need to do so. Able to spot that one on that outside edge. Close, close spot that's been back and forth this afternoon, this evening in San Antonio to these left-handed hitters, a little bit more success on the outside, and he gets the call there. As Corson Hastings appears for the first time. Entering this game with the bases loaded. Tigers have scored one run in this inning, up 5-0. Swing and a miss, and it's 0-2. Appears Hastings is pinch hitting for Caleb Woodward. Now in an 0-2 count. Outside, 1-2. and two. Swing and a miss, that's strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Saliz, and there's two away with the bases loaded. I mean, what incredible pace we were playing at here in San Antonio. Even with the four spot in the bottom of the second, things were flying by really up until this bottom half of the eighth where things have certainly slowed. Struggle on the mound, finding the strike zone. But as soon as Trinity gets the bases loaded and threatens a big, ugly number in their home half here, so Lee's has settled in very nicely after a couple of mistakes in the field. Two errors in this inning contributing to the bases being loaded. Both of them on the third base side of the infield. Lazara down 0-1. Away. And it's one and one. Another guy that is a huge threat in the box in this situation, three-hole hitter Nick Lazara. Ball low. Makes it two and one. Thoughts on the first ever attempted triple steal? And what better time to run it realistically? Inside. And three and one. So Lee's in danger of losing Lazara. Nowhere to put him. Fouled off. And it brings the count full.
more than anything. Just want to see Saliz continue to fight and be competitive around the zone right here. 3-2 pitch. Runners go, but they'll have to go back as Lazara fouls that off. Full count, two outs, and the base is loaded. Outside, and that walks in a run. And Solis did a very, very nice job in this half inning to come back and make things competitive, trying to limit the damage the best he can. Trinity and Lazara, probably the worst person to have up at the plate in that situation, however, just too good of vision and awareness. It's now the cleanup hitter, Christian Holloway up, who has hit one of the Tigers' two grand slams on the season. Very uncharacteristic 0 for 4 today. A huge spot right here. In theory, could send us home just a little bit early, but of course, as soon as those words come out of my mouth, that will end the inning, all thanks to Luke Terry. As we head to the top of the ninth, still 6-0 Trinity. They add two in the bottom of the eighth. Top of the ninth, Tigers lead this game six to nothing. Will Hellings still on the mound as he faces Dylan McKee, who takes strike one. Mentioned it earlier, Hellings has recorded multiple saves this season. Though I don't believe this one would fall in that category. Popped up, playable, and Holloway makes the catch for out number one. Yeah, not in line to earn the save here tonight, but I don't think there will be any complaints about that. Not a very high leverage situation at the moment, so I'm a little bit surprised to see this visit to the mound. And they will take the baseball from Will Hellings. His day is done. He gets the first out of the ninth inning, and a new pitcher will come in for Trinity when we come back.
New pitcher in the game for the Tigers, it's Zach Balbin who comes in with a strikeout to walk ratio of 10 to two and an 0-1 record. And so he'll try and collect the final two outs of the ninth inning in a six run game. And he fires strike one. But still remain pretty surprised to see him come into this game, five nothing lead already one out on the board here in the top of the ninth that Will Hellings was able to get. Very abnormal that they would pull Will Hellings in this situation. But nonetheless, that is what happened. 1-1 one, one pitch fouled off to make it one and two. We saw Will Hellings pitch in a six run game in the season opener against Babson. It was an eight to two game. Hellings pitched the final three innings of actually did earn the save in that game, despite the score line. So that's fouled off to keep it at one and two. Dylan Lamb trying to extend this game for St. Thomas down to their final two outs. And he extends the at bat as he fouls that pitch off. That was fouled off in a very interesting place over the Bell Center kind of diagonally and into what looked to be a walkway. So as that strike three, Lamb goes looking as Zach Balvin gets his first strike out of the night. And Balvin comes in and picks up right where all of the Trinity preceding pitchers have continued and thrived this evening. Just a beautiful gem of a pitching performance that has been pitched together, stitched together. I should stay on the mound here in San Antonio tonight. Swing and a miss, that's strike one as St. Thomas is down to their final out. Grounded to short. Baker makes the throw and that ends the ball game. The Tigers take game one of this three game set as we're treated to a light show here in San Antonio, a six nothing victory for Trinity over St. Thomas. And we just mentioned it, but could talk really all evening long about the performance from this Trinity pitching staff. Shivana going most of the way and very nearly had himself lined up for a no hitter here in San Antonio. And while he ultimately didn't get it, doesn't really stain the performance that he had on the mound in any way, shape, or form. He was absolutely spectacular. Bouncing back from what was a little bit of a rougher outing on the road at Shriner last weekend, and then coming in in relief. Hellings, as good as usual, especially in a pressure situation with the bases loaded. And then, you know, we get to see back Zach Balbin finish it off here in the ninth, a little bit of a treat. But overall, three arms that really, really impressed. Shivana goes 7.2 and earns the win. Allows only one hit. That was the only hit St. Thomas was able to get throughout the game. That'll do it for us in San Antonio. The Tigers now up to 5-2 and two in conference play as we hope to see you tomorrow. Same time Friday night as St. Thomas and Trinity will go at it for game two of this three-game series. For everyone in the control room, working the cameras, and for my partner, Luke Terry, I'm Cole Isaacson saying so long from San Antonio. We hope to see you again.